Okay, welcome to lab number one on minerals for Earth Science 10 20, 54. We're going to, in week number two, just begin looking at minerals, and you won't complete this lab until the end of week number three. So what I have here is your minerals are over here on the left, and the tray in front of you is the mineral tray we use for the on-site courses. Due to limits of costs, uh, I did not order you a 36 mineral tray. It's too expensive to do that. That's almost $100. So you have a fewer number of minerals to identify, but we can take a look at this mineral tray up front and we can talk a little bit about some of the properties of the minerals that you see in the tray here. Um, I think probably something might leap out to you right away. And what do you think jumps out at you as you look at this tray? I'll let you think about that for a second. Well, you see yellow and green and tan and pink and brown and white, glistening white. Okay, you've got some optical cues and properties that are being exhibited here. Uh, color is very interesting, uh, makes it fun. Uh, the minerals are definitely beautiful. And some of your gemstones obviously have great uh, physical beauty. But color is the least reliable identification property for minerals. Uh, you want to look at other properties before you begin to decide uh, with color as an accessory characteristic. So um, if we look at this tray here, we can see that um, this mineral, for example, has kind of a dull and earthy uh, appearance, and that is what is called that mineral's luster, how light reflects off of it. So this one is kind of dull and earthy. The, the, it's, you, it looks kind of rusty, if you will. Whereas this one right here, uh, if I can get it out of the tray, this one has like a glassy, shiny luster. Okay, This one also right here, uh, the black mineral, has a glassy, shiny luster. If we uh, move it back and forth in the light. This one has a glassy luster to it. And we have this mineral here. Uh, which is not uh, transparent, it's not even translucent. Uh, light can't pass through it. We could say it's, it's, it has almost a pearly luster to it. Okay, uh, here's another mineral that has a glassy luster. Uh, it's kind of uh, not as uh, readily uh, uh, reflecting light as th some of the more flat surfaced minerals. This one has a crystal that we'll talk about later. So that's looking at optical properties. What color and what luster? Uh, how is the light reflecting off the surface of the mineral? That, that again is called luster. Um, we could go further and say that some minerals in this tray have a luster that is, we've looked at glassy and earthy, and we could say some have a metallic luster. And uh, we'll talk more about how we can determine whether a mineral is uh, metallic or non-metallic. Uh, some of them are obviously uh, metallic, and we'll talk about uh, doing that um, differenti differentiation a little bit later. Okay, now let's get started a little bit with some of your equipment and begin the lab and give you a chance to get hands-on here. And in your uh, kit, your laboratory kit, you have several different uh, bags that I want you to open up and make sure that you have everything that's in the bag. You should have a little eyepiece uh, which magnifies ten times that will allow you to inspect the mineral very close up and look at its surface which will be important in identifying it. You have a little hydrochloric acid and I want you to not even open this until you have completed your laboratory safety agreement. You must I will not allow you to have any credit for a lab that you do not sign off on your safety agreement. This is for your protection and protection of people in your household. This is uh, dilute hydrochloric acid, 3%. So um, you want to be careful not to get this on your clothing or in your eyes. And um, if you get any in your eyes, you need to rinse it out with water right away. So maybe you should do your lab in the kitchen or in the bathroom. Uh, Some place where you have a flat surface and access to running water if you need it immediately. Okay. And these are your minerals, and you have 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 minerals to identify. And um, you'll be working with these. And you can see right away we have a lot of different uh, characteristics here. Uh, that has a definite metallic luster. And this has a glassy luster. And um, this one right here has a, a glassy luster as well, but it's a little bit more dull uh, than this mineral right here, which reflects light uh, along a beautifully uh, flat surface. Okay, so we have visual properties that are apparent. There's some visual properties that are not apparent, and they have to do with what the mineral looks like in powdered form. Okay. To do uh, the analysis of the mineral in powdered form, we call that the streak test. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a mineral from your tray. I'm not going to use one of yours because I want to make sure that you get a good uh, amount of uh, unknown and help you do a creative investigation. But if I rub this mineral on the white streak plate, this is an unglazed porcelain plate called a streak plate, I get a nice shiny uh, dark gray uh, streak. So I would say that this mineral right here has a dark gray streak, okay? And if I look at uh, this mineral right here and I grind it on the streak plate, it's the streak plate's white and the mineral's white. So I need to take the powdered residue that I've gotten from that white mineral and put it on maybe a black piece of paper. And aha, we can see that this mineral's powdered form is white, okay? So you're going to be recording the, the luster. You're going to be recording the streak and the color of the mineral in your laboratory report, report form. Okay, one last thing, and uh, I'll leave it at that for right now with the presentation, and I will come back later and do another video helping you further along with understanding minerals and investigating them. We can rank minerals as to um, their hardness, okay? So we're going to start with your fingernail. And your fingernail, on average, has a hardness on a scale we use in earth science and geology called the Mohs scale, M-O-H-S. And 2.5 on the Mohs scale, I can take my fingernail and cause this mineral to uh, crumble as I grind my fingernail against it. So we would say this mineral that I'm holding right here is softer than 2.5 on the Mohs scale. We can say less than 2.5, okay? And um, we don't actually have a, uh, a tool to assess whether it's 2 or whether it's 1 or 0.5 on the Mohs scale. So it's sufficient for you right now just to say it's less than 2.5, softer than your fingernail. Okay, well, we can uh, look at a variety of minerals. This uh, mineral right here is a mineral that you will be investigating. Uh, this mineral right here has... Uh, it's harder than the one I was just holding. If I grind my fingernail against this mineral, my fingernail is going to give way. So this is harder than 2.5, so I'm going to go up with uh, objects that are harder than my fingernail. Here is a penny that's 3.5, and I'm not scratching this mineral sample, so it's harder than 3.5. I'll go up the scale further. This is a wire nail. This is 4.5. I'll see if I can scratch it with the wire nail. Nope, I can't do that. Now I'm going to go up to, from 4.5 with the wire nail, I'm going to go up to the glass plate, which is 5.5. Okay, key thing with the glass plate, some can be careful and use it like this, but you got to be careful that it doesn't break. So I would recommend, even though it's a very heavy gauge glass plate, putting it on a flat surface and then seeing if you can scratch it with this mineral. And indeed, it will scratch the glass plate, so it's harder than 5.5. And now we'll come up to the streak plate, and we'll grind it on the streak plate and see what we get. And it's almost the same hardness as the streak plate, because we're only getting uh, a, a very tiny amount of uh, physical removal of material by joining these two together and rubbing them. So we could say that this mineral is as hard as 6.5, and we could say it's between 6.5 and 7 on the Mohs scale, uh, because most of these samples will actually scratch the streak plate. Okay, so again, the key thing to remember is your fingernails are 2.5, the copper penny is 3.5, the wire nail is 4.5, the glass plate is 5.5,
and the streak plate, the unglazed porcelain plate, is 6.5 on the Mohs scale. Okay, make sure that you check your kit and see that you have everything there that you need for minerals investigation. And what I'd like you to do in week number two is record the following characteristics that we've looked at now, and that includes color, luster, streak, and hardness. Okay, that gets you started for week one. Uh, the report is not due until the end of week three, but this is kind of where I'd like you to be going in week number two. All right, best to you.